My name is Robert Hanley. I'm the quality manager of Atlantic Language based in Galway. Robert, I want to start by asking you, what challenges has the pandemic posed in your school? Um, it, it posed plenty of challenges, and I can go into that um, in, in a bit of detail now. Um, maybe just by prefacing remarks, I, um, for the, I, I went about just gathering some some input from our team on this procedure. Um, I put out the questions to the to the group and just kind of compile things in. So I'll show you a couple of slides with um, testimony and feedback from from our staff, and um, I'll add some comments and context to that then if I can as well. So in terms of the challenges. Um, Sorry, now I'm, I'm not sharing uh, my screen yet, am I? Not yet. Okay, um, let me just pull that up in one sec. That's the first challenge, figuring out Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody had to, had that, had to do that course. <laughs> that should be visible now? Yeah. Yeah, so um, in terms of the challenges, you know, there are some examples there when I put that question to the team, things they've commented on. And you can see it, it kind of breaks down like the single biggest one, I think, is the uncertainty. Um, like the, the uncertainty, like the, the changing status of the school, you know, with short notice, you're closed. Again, with fairly short notice, you're reopened. And with again, fairly short notice, you're closed again. And you can't predict how the pandemic is going to go. Um, but that's obviously the biggest challenge. And that has an awful lot of repercussion, um, knock on effects then as well. Um, the uncertainty created by that. Um, a couple of other challenges, like knowing exactly where we fit in the English language sector, like um, we don't always know where we belong in terms of guidelines and instructions from the government. Sometimes we're, we're in with further education and the colleges and maybe the instructions that come out in terms of how we operate aren't necessarily tailored to, to language schools and, and how we try to keep businesses going and keep businesses alive. And um, trying to find what's best for us, uh, for what's best for our students is a challenge in there as well. Um, and the best practice, like best practices, if you're going online, how you can do that is a challenge as well. And another big challenge then, like in you know some of the comments in green, kind of support that is just the disruption to the business, which has been huge, catastrophic, really. Um, the entire language travel stream uh, just cut off in, in one go. Um, academic year, junior courses, training courses, um, and the, that of course leads to to the, to the unavoidable loss of. Um, of staff, of loads of good staff, good teachers, people you're just not able to keep working. It's a huge challenge to try to keep the business operating, keep people working as much as possible. And even looking to the future, having people still there, that whether you know we're able to keep working throughout this period or have to go have to be like go and come back, that challenge that you come back with just a stronger team is, is still a looming one. And you know, because ultimately we've lost a high season probably into losing a second high season with the spring next year as well. And then you know that has a dispiriting effect on morale as well. It's 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 hard to we've all adjusted to working remotely in the process. You lose that ability to check up on on students, on staff, see how everyone's doing. And then the other challenge, I think, in some of the um, the comments in black there point to that. Just the logistics. If you move to online, um, if you do it very quickly without much run-in time, there's just a lot of logistical challenges to that for students and for staff trying to turn that into something sustainable that brings in revenue to keep the business going, looking for specific programs, looking to deliver um, some form of online tuition for, for the general students, but also for, for specific partners to, to, to keep revenue going. That, that is a huge challenge in itself. You're trying to sell something while you're building it, while you're training, while you're also bleeding uh, talented and qualified people. So that in itself is a challenge. And then um, not to mention the reopening and the, the logistical challenges and the housekeeping challenges of that as well and finding a good way to, to keep the product going and try and get back to the old Atlantic was a challenge when, for the period when we were reopened. Um, you know, uh, teaching through, through visors and masks presents a unique challenge in itself as well. And how would you say you and your team have responded to those challenges? In, um, I didn't even mention some of the specifics of, of classroom challenges as well. Like um, you can see some more feedback here from um, from, from staff on how students have found it, you know, and, and getting into the student morale side as well. And the ways we respond to these, you know, it, it, you have to be very reactive. That's the position we're in. And, you know, you, you can see some of those challenges are just simple things like uh, teaching students online if they don't have a very good internet connection. Um, the same thing with staff preparing hardware for, uh, and then acquiring a whole new methodology and way of doing business. So the ways we try and respond to it, um, communication is, the, the big one and you have to try and almost compensate uh, for for all that 
in face-to-face -face communication, I mentioned that that's lost, you know, um, you try and get uh, meetings online, you try and have uh, support sessions, information sessions, Q&A sessions for students online as well. You try and have a check-in system, you use the accommodation wing of the business to check in on the students who are, who are still in the accommodation. You, you try and um, have one-to-one -one where possible as well. So just compensating as much as possible communication. You know, keeping that communication going there with teachers is, is something as well, something we've tried to do and hopefully we can do more with, with the likes of ELT Ireland as well and support groups um, to keep that communication going too because of that uncertainty of, of people's job prospects. Then like, obviously the, the points in green there, there's a big adaptation on the teaching side, um, it's, it's learn a whole new skill. It's try to transfer teaching ability online, and that's that's not done uh, with a click of a click of, of your fingers. That that's quite challenging, and it's learning on the job. And it's a couple of rough and ready experiences as well in the process. But it, it, it there's, there's a it's incumbent on teachers there, and I can say ours have done really well with it. They just learn that whole new skill quite quickly and under pressure. And and then that comes from the other point I'd make there is just just being as agile as possible. We've got a fairly agile um, management, I think, um, in terms of we only so we were online within a week, I think, of the first closure, um, and then setting up a virtual learning environment shortly after that. So that agility, something we've obviously got better at throughout the year, and it was really necessary now in hindsight to be able to operate quickly like that, to set up things quickly, to to train up people, to to learn while while working as well, um, in order to to set up new revenue streams and start doing um, some of our tuition, some of our programs online. One of the points there is about keeping morale high. Uh, can you tell us something more about that and how that was experienced? For staff, hmm. it's it's a challenge because um, you know, I, I keep mentioning that we, in the process you almost forget that everyone's learning to work remotely as well. Um, nine tenths of of us uh, of the team are working from home as well, so you lose that uh, just the the, the physical staff room and all that that brings with it but that the, ch the chance to to share a space you'll have a more honest conversation face to face than you will in, in, a, in a kind of minute of the zoom meeting um so that, that's a challenge to keep up that morale and you have to try and get creative and find ways to to keep people in touch you know um whether texting or or, or meeting up like you're having groups or, or you know extending meetings beyond the necessary into maybe a chance for a bit more of a chat it's important not to forget people are isolated and, and at home and working from bedroom, kitchen, spare rooms as well. So they're trying to keep tabs, I think, is vital. And, and then all you can do, particularly for the teachers who have to learn so much so quickly, is just um, give them the resource, give them the training that they need um, to allow them to be able to do their job in this new reality um, as well as they can. That's all you can do is put it in front of them. And, you know, competence then breeds, breeds morale, I think, and it helps. Um, and then it just becomes, it goes back to that first point I mentioned, just, just keeping tabs on people, checking in people are okay. And how has the how has feedback from either the staff or the students kind of informed your response as you went along? Um, let me see. So I'll move on here to the next part. So I'm a couple of uh, examples of our online classes there. I forgot I'd uh, included a couple of visuals there. How like so maybe to go through some of the feedback for uh, as we've received it first. Like this is some sample of, of student feedback because. I mean, my own role, the, the team role at large, would be to look at that feedback and, and try and extract that practice from it as much as we can. So you can see some student feedback here. Um, you know, uh, the teachers say, like, students, they do feel the pressure that you can see it ourselves in the communication. Students maybe will have a little bit less patience, perhaps, to wait for something. It might be a little bit more demanding, but that comes with more written communication. Um, you lose that face to face. Um, so we do, we have asked for more patience from students, but also try to double up and just communicate with them as well as possible and try and not always rely on just emails and um, give them a little bit of context. We do see that um, students, interestingly, were happier in the virtual setup than they were in the socially distanced classroom. For our feedback showed that um, they were quite critical actually um, and exacting, but as you'd expected them to be once we reopened uh, on how that, and, and they, they missed the the old, relaxed way of the classroom. Um, you know, it wasn't the same with half the number of students and socially distanced. We found that once students settled in and we were able to train them, equip them to, to do classes online, they actually preferred the online. And we also found that like, we, by keeping in touch, we were able to maybe get students to continue their bookings, to, to keep their, um, to keep their studies going as much as possible and transferring them online. So that was one of the things we tried to do too. Um, you can see some of the student direct feedback I've copied in there in red. Um, 
a couple of interesting points in it, you know, and just about exacting kind of uh, communication I've talked about uh, what students are asking us to do. And um, it's important for us to keep tabs on that. Um, interestingly, like they're, they're hiring better teachers, it's the same teachers. <laughs> there must be there must be some positive feedback in there somewhere. <laughs> they think we're, we're hiring new people. And uh, we did interesting student feedback that we should reopen the bar. Uh, I didn't know we had a bar. It's there, it's well hidden. In the student feedback, it, it is interesting. You know, there's um, I think some staff feedback then as well. Um, a couple of things I would take from that, like um, when we asked our staff for feedback on the process, you know, the, the communication point is everything. Even though it's uncertain, I think uncertain communication is probably better than no communication at all. That's one thing we've learned. Um, try to find other creative ways to support and replace all that, uh, the come all that synergy with being in the same building. Um, you have to do much more training and development than for, for staff than you normally would, particularly when it comes to teaching, but other departments do, like registrations and so forth. There's a whole lot, there's a whole new field of training that's needed. Um, try and bring that on and develop in-house training, empower people to lead the way and take on training as well, and then mentoring and joining, you know, teacher training groups, teacher interest groups, um, and try to do um, team building activities as much as we can as well. Um, some of the ways we'll try to react. And uh, apart from uh, how to use uh, Zoom and all of that, what else would you have, say you've learned along the way as an organization or as professionals? Yeah, I put that question to the team as well. These are the, some of the responses I got back. Um, you can see kind of go from macro to micro there. Like the, um, the, the logistics, you can simplify with uh, and say like um, learning to teach online, but that, that's transference as well as lear learning new digital competences, uh, using um, a virtual classroom, using a virtual learning environment, preparing for specific programs that they call for a slightly different methodology. If we're able to bring in uh, a new stream of business by teaching online, the onus is on everyone to skill up really, really quickly on that. So um, everyone has to acquire new skills in that. Um, and it, it's, it can range from quite simple mechanical stuff to getting into things like inclusion and um, making sure students are communicating. Students aren't, aren't always the, the keenest to leave on the camera or to participate in the class or to maintain a, a proper kind of study atmosphere where they are. So getting past that as well, even into the making connections and maintaining relationships with students, that, that's a big challenge in terms of um, training and upskilling for teachers. Like another thing we've learned, I would say, um, when, not a very nice analogy, when the cones to your head, you move much quicker. Um, we were able to move procedures online quicker than we would have done so in, in, a, different, in a different universe without the pandemic. Um, things like um, placement testing, level change testing, you know, um, students, some of the student services. You, you, you have to do it quickly and you have to kind of check later on for quality control and that you're doing it properly and everyone's doing it the same way. But um, the technology is there and the software is there and, and the willingness to learn we'd be glad to see is there as well. You can move some of these procedures online quite quickly and when it goes back to a fully reopened school um, as soon as possible i hope that's that's the skill set that's there we're all more comfortable with them um, more distance communication more online procedures more blended procedures around the communication registration students but then in the classroom as well and um yeah, then the, our other main point like that we've taken from is that the business model needs to evolve a little bit. You know, um, we, depending, like the language travel industry is, you know, the, every few years there's another reason for, there's another injection of volatility. Um, this time with the pandemic, but it, numerous things can happen to that. So it's critical, I think, in, in our context and, and maybe for the industry at large as well, that we're able to react and not depending on on visa-based programs um, and, and short stay groups that may be subject to disruption. You know, the pandemic this year came out of the blue, but uh, you know, the world we live in now with um, travel so accessible and people mixing so much, that, that kind of thing can happen again or something else can happen that we don't know about. So it's getting past that dependency on, on, on the, the stream, of course, of learning English in Ireland and try to, to move into more specific, maybe more sustainable models now that we've acquired a little bit of online competency and keep developing that competency. Um, but also um, look for more alternate revenue streams outside of that as well, I think is, is critical and something we've learned that we that, that has to be done. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and then just to kind of round it up, looking forward, how do you see um, uh, the, the future in terms of what stays with us? What do we get back uh, or what changes completely again? 
once we're um, once we're back to the the status quo or something like it. Well, in the medium to long term. Yeah, it's it's very hard to predict. Um, you know, the you you can read a lot about the changing the changing workplace and and you know um, everyone had to had to really quickly react to to working working from home, working remotely, team communication becoming much more using getting familiar with cloud based stuff, uh, you know, file storage and things like that. That's all part of the new reality. We're all able to do that now, comfortable with that now. So that, that changes things a bit. Um, you know, the, the disruption, the commercial disruption to students traveling, um, the, there's no reason not to offer a digital component with that now, a blended component with it. Why shouldn't students be able to do a few weeks um, sort of before before traveling to the country? Why shouldn't things like placement testing be, be done online? So that, that that, um, you know, as maybe it's disingenuous to say, but we're not always the most modern in terms of te technologically speaking of an industry either. Uh, you, you know, you're good self accepted maybe, um, but we can use we can use the, the tools that are there a bit more. So that 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 the the rate of progress there I think has been vastly accelerated. Um, and this uncertainty, like what I the, the first point I made, um, that, that that's not going anywhere. Um, you would hope that what we've taken from it is a more transparent way to, to communicate with all the stakeholders, with students, you know, with staff, um, with agents, remember those. Um, but just this honesty, the, uh, this transparency, even if you are communicating uncertainty, it's still, it's still communication. And, and yeah, I think that the pressure, that one of the responses to the challenges has been to up the game in terms of communication. It's still much more to be done, but hopefully that's, that's something everyone can take from it as well. Um, you know, schools, teachers, staff, students, that everyone, that that circle of communication is, is much fuller and, and uh, more, more transparent for everybody involved is something I would hope would emerge from this as well as a positive, aside from being very, very dapper and, and quick with, with the Zoom buttons like that.